guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ri. If you are new here, then welcome. So basically, you clicked on this video, I'm assuming your baby has colic, is crying in the night, crying in the day, just doesn't stop crying, really, really upset, usually in the first few months. I feel you, I've got you. I went through it with my daughter. It was so, so hard. No one prepares you for the colic. I don't think I even knew what colic was until I literally gave birth and I was looking into it and I was like, why is my baby crying? So colic is when a baby is crying a lot and it's not clear why. It's a common problem that should get better on its own. The main symptom of colic is a baby crying a lot for no obvious reason. So my baby didn't really have colic when I breastfed. I found that she started getting colic when I started bottle feeding with formula. That's when it got really, really bad. These are things that I did with my baby that I felt like really, really did help. Obviously, I am not a doctor. These are things that I have done as a mother that have helped. Anti-colic bottles probably the most important one out of all anti-colic bottles. Don't go buying normal baby bottles, anti-colic. You've got to look for the word anti-colic and to be fair, it's gonna be trial and error. I had the Nano B baby bottles. They did not work with my daughter whatsoever. I felt like they made her colic worse. We got the Dr. Brown ones and they've basically got a little air vent. When Nia was drinking the milk, she would breathe air into it, but it would go to the top of the milk and she wouldn't take in the bubbles. So it's got this inside it. So I did originally, these were the first word bottles that we got after the Nano Beeb ones weren't working. That worked. Love these ones. But what I did find with the Dr. Brown ones was she didn't have a very good latch on the teats and she would just dribble milk everywhere. That's what I found. That's the only thing I found a problem with that one. And then we went on to the MAM ones, which seem to be like the fave. And they've got on the bottom circles with air vents. I think when it obviously the baby breathes it out, it goes out of the air vent instead of in her mouth. But MAM bottles are definitely my favourite. They are a bit of a faff to clean, but self-sterilizing so if you're going away on holiday you don't have to take a sterilizer with you as long as obviously where you're staying has a microwave but so much easier than lugging a big massive sterilizer around with you but yeah anti-colic bottles as number one you have to have then we have gripe water gripe water you probably didn't even know of it really before you had a baby well i didn't anyway <laughs> maybe i'm just like so completely clueless for the symptomatic relief of distress associated with wind in infants from one month to one year old. So they've got to be one month when they start having this. I have heard it's two weeks as well. So my health visitor said to me two weeks. So each to their own, whatever one you want to decide you are the mother. What I did with the gripe water is I used to put a little bit, the recommended dose, I think it's five mil. Yeah, five mils. Remember to sterilize whatever you're using to measure it out. Use that and put that in the milk. I just put it in her feed. So then we've got Invacol drops. But Invacol drops you basically give before feed. So it's just got a little nozzle, like you'd give medicine, you suck it up, put it at the back of the baby's throat. They probably will not like this. My daughter hated it. And if you smell it and tasted some, it's actually like a really strong orange flavor. So for babies going from oh, only trying milk to having this really strong orange flavor in their mouth is pretty gross, I can imagine. But yeah, this before feeds. I have heard this also causes constipation. So be careful with that. I know you can use Colleaf, I think that's what it's called, but it is like double the price, but obviously you don't really want to cause your baby to have constipation. So if you are using this and you notice they aren't opening their bowels, maybe stop using this, try something different. Then we have daily probiotic sachets. So I just got these on Amazon. So these are daily probiotic sachets. They're for zero to six months. So these are good. So you can start using them from birth. And they're little sachets, cherry flavor. You know, she tastes like cherry. You put in the milk in a feed. You can do it once a day or you can do it twice a day. I think twice a day if your baby 
has really bad colic and it's formulated for colic, gas and constipation, supports immune and digestive health. And you're probably wondering if you haven't heard of this, like what it is. So I did get what it was up on my phone. So probiotics may help add good bacteria to an infant's stomach more quickly. A baby acquires good bacteria from breast milk or formula and later on food. The bacteria in your baby's stomach may be altered by many factors, such as a delivery method, gestational age and whether they take antibiotic early in life. Well, that's interesting because I actually went into hospital with sepsis after I gave birth and I was taking antibiotics, really strong ones, and I was breastfeeding at the same time. So obviously the baby was taking in my antibiotics. So maybe that might have been the reason why her digestive system went a bit funny, who knows. But these, I honestly feel like they helped because my baby's colic really, really did improve, I'd say about a month and a half after. Could have been coincidence that it improved, but I know adults take these as well to help with their gut health. So you could give it a go if you want to and you've done your research into it yourself and made your own decision. So then we've got burping you need to burp some people say if your baby has really bad wind stop the feed halfway through and give them a burp but you always have to burp even if you're doing a really late night feed and they fell asleep you argue with yourself aren't you when they've fallen asleep do I just burp them and they might wake up again and that's really annoying and I've got to settle them to sleep or do I just leave them fall asleep but then they're gonna wake up later on in discomfort so I definitely always always burp your baby. Then we've got distraction, which is a good one. So in the night, you could use a white noise machine where it just plays white noise and it just distracts the baby. Or if you don't have a white noise machine, you could just go on YouTube and search white noise sound on your phone and you can get ones with that don't play ads in it. So it would just play it on your phone and you could try it that way. And also for distraction, if it's like daytime, you could just take them out up for a walk in their pram, give them their dummy. I used to think the pram was a really good help because it was really, really distracting and looking around and seeing everything. And then we've got Hing and Fennel tummy rub. So you can't use this until three months. So if your baby does have quite bad colic and it's like month two, you unfortunately can't use this yet. But I did use this at three months. It's there. So basically this absolutely stinks. I don't even want to touch it. I can smell it on my hands and I'm <laughs> only touching it now. Literally reeks. So it's Mama Earth Easy Tummy Roll On Hing and Fennel Oil Natural Leaf for Indigestion and Colic. It's basically just like a natural remedy that you can use to help. So you open it up, it's just like a roll on and you roll it on the baby's tummy and it's supposed to relieve the pain of colic and also it reeks. So if you want it all over your hands and you want your baby to stink of it, then yeah. <laughs> but anything's worth a try when your baby is crying. And then we've got baby heat pads on tummy slash warm bath. So obviously if your baby is crying at 3 a.m. in the night, you're not gonna go and put them in a warm bath, are you? But I found these really, really good. I got these off Amazon. Well, it's just like a little baby heat pad and you put it in the microwave for like 20 seconds. So this one has the one with the beads inside. And then I got this little belly bar. So you'd put this on the baby's belly, which I actually preferred this one because you could just place it on their tummy and obviously you'd always check it's at the right temperature, it's not too hot for your baby. I'd put it like on a sensitive part of your body and just check it that way, like you would with the bath. But you'd put it on the baby's tummy and there you can just balance it. Never fall asleep with this on the baby. I'd always take it out obviously with risks of SIDS. You don't want anything extra in the baby's cot with them and obviously you don't want it to go over their face or anything this one you'd put round the baby's belly but that in the middle of the night when you're trying to settle them and like they're in the cot I did find a bit annoying so I didn't actually use this one that much I used this one way more so then we've got holding the bottle horizontal to the floor so basically when you're feeding the baby you don't want to be feeding her like this you want to hold the bottle horizontal and then the flow isn't as strong going into the baby's mouth so they're not taking in too much air too much milk 
at once, which is good. Also, someone did tell me this on one of my TikTok comment videos. Oh no, no, it wasn't. Sorry, someone told me this on my A Day in the Life YouTube video and it helped. It was really, really good advice. Instead of shaking the bottle when you've made the feed, you do this you roll it in your hands and then it, it stops too many bubbles coming into the milk and then going obviously into your baby's tummy and causing gas. And also sit your baby upright for at least 10 minutes after every feed. And then you've got the complete obvious one. I never thought that I was going to be a singing person to my baby but I sing every song that I can think of when I'm trying to soothe them. And what more does a baby want when they're upset or in a little bit of pain? They want the comfort of their mother or their father. So you just giving them a cuddle, singing softly to them, could make a world of difference. So I hope those ideas were informative for you guys. I hope that your baby doesn't have colic as much when you start using these things. Please comment down below if any of these tricks or tips helped you in any way. I would love to hear your stories or any advice that you want to give to other mamas that are looking at this video and then read in the comments you can give some advice of what helped with your baby's colic i will remind you again i'm not a doctor but these tips and tricks helped with my baby i am a mum learning as well just as you guys so yeah please give this video a like if you thought it was good <laughs> and please give me a subscribe if you want to see more mother content i'm going to be posting more videos and especially with my baby girl nia i'm going to be posting more videos of her as well but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video if you're still watching and i shall see you in the next one bye